Only forgiveness can bring about healing in our lives, in our communities, in our nation, and in this world. I know it can. I know it can. I know because one day I had to forgive. And it wasn't the easiest thing to do. I had to forgive a young man who killed my wife and eight other people at Emmanuel Amy Church, Dylan Roof. And I really didn't have him on my mind. I didn't care who did it. I didn't want to know his name. It just didn't matter. I was too, too involved in, in thinking about just what happened to my wife and whether she suffered. I, I didn't have Dylan on my mind. All I could think about was her. Why wasn't I there for her? And he had a bond hearing. And I didn't see a need to go to the bond hearing because I, I was an agent of the state for 27 years. I took people to bond hearings all the time. You go to bond hearing, you set a bond, you go back to your cell. I was like, so what? You know, I didn't want him in my life. I didn't want him in my children's life. But my children wanted to go. And they said they wouldn't go unless I went. And I didn't want to take that from them, so I went. And I told them very adamantly, I said, listen, we're not going to say one word. Don't say anything to anybody. Because you don't need to. But God had other plans. I went there and I sat down with my head hanging down, looking at my watch saying, Lord, please let this hurry be over so I can go back home. But God has something to say. And he whispered in my ear. And I recognized that voice because I heard that voice more than once before. And I knew that I had to do whatever it is he said to do. And he said, I have something to say. Get up. I got up immediately. And my kids look at me like, where are you going? You, you practically got on us real bad about not saying anything about where you're going. So I knew they would understand once God said what he had to say. I didn't know what he, he was going to say. And on my way walking, I'm like, okay, God, you know, I'm going to be there in a little while. I need to know. I need to hear from you. And God said to Dylan, he said, son, I forgive you. My family forgives you. But you need to repent because you are in a lot of trouble right now. And you need to confess. And you need to give your life to the one who your life means the most. I said, and you do that, everything else will be okay. And I left because that's all God had to say. But let me tell you, after I did that, I experienced God's love. I experienced God's peace, a peace that the Bible says passes all understanding. For once in my life, I knew exactly what that meant. He just took it all. He took the anger. He took the hate. He took everything. It was like I was light. He just took it off of me. It was like something took everything out of side of me, off of me. I was just as light as a feather and I felt God's peace. I felt God's love. And he freed me. He freed me. My anger, my hate. He freed me. And he gave me peace. And I've been having that peace ever since. And it gets better and better each day. You see, God's love assured me that he is in control. That he prepared a place for Myra and he was going to bring me and my family through this day by day. And I know without a shadow of a doubt that acts of forgiveness can heal you because it healed me from the inside out. I'm not the same person I was. I'm much better, and I thought I was already much better. 
<laughs> and he has me on this mission now to tell you what I'm telling you today because it's so real. It's so simple. God got on that cross so that we could be healed from any and everything through the act of forgiveness. That's why Isaiah says, by his stripes, we are healed. I knew this without a shadow of a doubt because it heals, it's healing my family, it's healing my church, it's healing this community, and it's healing the world right now. And I know because it is healing me as well. And not only is it healing me, but the city of Charleston is healing. I've heard some things in Charleston that I've never heard before in my life between white and black. The community was united. People from all walks of life, from every race and creed, united and helped in every way, in any way they could to console each other because we all felt the pain. We all felt it. The state of South Carolina is healing. Our governor, legislatures, and senators had a change of heart and they brought what? The Confederate flag down. Nobody was talking about the flag. But it came down. And God showed us through a simple act of forgiveness that we could be healed. Our nation capital is healing. President Obama, when he came, the former President Obama, President came, and when he spoke at the late Reverend Clemente Pinckney's funeral, it was the first time he ever talked about racism. Racism. In Charleston, South Carolina, the first state that succeeded from the Union be, talked about racism here. And now we all are talking about what? Racism. I remember shortly after I preached at a predominantly white aristocratic church, 900 something members, 500 on any given Sunday. And I didn't know why they wanted me to speak, but God had a good reason. And I spoke on Ye Are the Light of the World. Make a long story short, after I spoke on it, a young lady about my age, a white female, got up and she said, Reverend Thompson, she said, I was taught racism. And she talked about how her parents and her grandparents and so on taught her to hate us. And I thought that was a very courageous thing. I never heard nothing like that in my life. And she said when she got to an age where she started having her own children, she knew better. She knew better a long time ago, she said, but she just couldn't bring herself to do it and not be a racist because of her status. And her friends who she hung with and worked with because of the way she, they felt. She said, but when she heard about us forgiving Dylan, she said she stepped out on faith and she confessed and she repented to God of racism. And then she said, now I'm asking you to forgive me. And I said, hallelujah, let's give God some praise. I told y'all, we gotta stand up, we gotta praise God on this because this has never happened, not in my life. Forgiveness heals y'all. It changes hearts and it changes attitudes. 